All right, so <clears throat> this week the Mac Pro is shipping. We have uh, configurations from uh, $6,000 to uh, one whole year salary for most Americans, $52,599. And, um, and that's without a display. Yes, but without a display. <laughs> that's just so, a computer. <laughs> yeah, I think that this is meant for... Um, <clears throat> for movie studios? Yeah, yeah. totally. That's for major, major, or maybe rendering yeah. of large like files for uh, some other computer programs. I don't see yeah. photographers using it much. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, I, I think it's it's total overkill for photographers. Like, don't even think about buying this thing unless you're doing some sort of uh, some sort of video editing with you know lots of of like layers and lots of like yeah. rendering things. I mean, and for photos grading. and like for Photoshop and for Lightroom yeah. or even Capture One, like you'd be fine with an <clears> iMac <throat> or an iMac Pro. You don't need to have a computer of that size yeah, in most agree. instances. Yeah. What, what do you think, Corey? If, if you just had $6,000 laying around, uh, would you rather buy this or make a down payment on a Cybertruck? <laughs> <laughs> Probably, I might get a little more use out of the Cybertruck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so... I have uh, some some advice for photographers who are um, who who maybe like looked at this and they were thinking about it. Maybe there's an amateur with lots of money, but I, I mean, if I were you, I would uh, definitely consider spending uh, you know the six thousand dollars on a trip rather than um, on this computer. You don't actually need this for photography, so um, you could get away with a computer that's half the price or less. I mean, yeah, you, oh, could, for sure. you could build one for. Yeah. yeah, you definitely don't yeah. need that much machine. <clears throat> yeah, so this comes with uh, eight to twenty-eight cores and uh, thirty-two gigabytes to one hundred and sixty-eight gigabytes of RAM. And um, instead of paying uh, six thousand dollars for this or more, you could uh, just do smart previews. So what smart previews do in Lightroom is they build uh, twelve megapixel files, and then every file you look at is just twelve megapixels. They're easy to go through, and they're like DNGs and optimized for Lightroom, so it'll speed up your Lightroom immensely. You shouldn't have any delay after you click that little box in there. So bam, saved you six thousand dollars. Um, it has uh, up to eight terabytes of SSD storage, and um, instead of uh, spending six thousand dollars on the Mac Pro, you could uh, just buy um, a, an SSD. Um, they're around two hundred dollars, so you can get like a five twelve gigabyte SSD for uh, for like you know close to two hundred dollars. And then for all your old uh, backup images or just images that are sitting in your hard drive that you want to offload, you can now buy eight terabyte hard drives for $140. So um, for, for things that are just kind of sitting there that you're not actively working on, offload those off onto um, the eight terabyte hard drives. So that would be my suggestion and to not spend the money on this crazy expensive computer. And then... Um, as far as the display goes, I think photographers are most excited about the display here because displays do matter well, that's to kind of part of the thing with the Apple. Like, So for a long time, <laughs> Apple had that great cinema display, mm -hmm. and then they didn't really follow up on that for a while. And there was a long time there where they didn't even have a display. So yeah, I think like, the last one they had was that Thunderbolt, the LED display. Yeah, and that was a good one, it but was. like... Now that we want 4K, 5K, right. 8K resolution, we want to be able to see more pixels. It's nice that they're coming out with something better, but it's going to be very costly, right? Even the stand is, I think the stand's close to $1,000. That was a big Just for the stand, yeah. the stand was $1,000. Yes. And then yeah. the monitor's another like four or five grand, yeah. is that right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's a very <laughs> expensive screen to be looking at. If you buy something like that, you, you've got to think that you're going to have it for yeah. a significant amount of time. I, I secretly watched a couple of these videos on YouTube of like nerdy guys like putting the screen onto the stand though, and it's really cool how magnetic yeah. it is. Yeah, I mean, it's, it is Apple. They're... It's cool. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, instead of buying this display, um, like the biggest thing for photographers is that you want the display to be calibrated properly so your prints turn out good. So right. instead of buying this crazy expensive display, just uh, print your photos regularly. Like pick like one day every six months, one day every month where you order a bunch of 8 by 10s compare that to your screen. You can do a manual calibration to make sure everything's lining up. Or get a tool. I mean, like I have the, the spider tool for mm -hmm. my... Yeah, uh, me too. And that works yeah. pretty well. I mean, it's not perfect, but... If you calibrate your monitor maybe once a month, you're going to be pretty yeah. close. Yeah, shell out um, 50 to 100 bucks for um, a, a calibrator uh, for your screen. Make sure the screen brightness is good. I have the Spider Pro. Which one do you have? Uh, yeah, Spider yeah, Pro. It's Spider like an older Pro. version. But I think that one's the most a, popular one. There's another yeah. one that's something monkey. There's like a cube one, too. I can't remember the name of it. Yeah, so there's a couple different yeah. options out there. I like the spider research. stuff. But yeah, yeah we just all use yeah, this. If, you, if you're ever concerned about how your images look, just order a bunch of prints and look at them all compare them. Yeah, and then obviously you calibrate your monitor based off those prints, and then the next time I'll be like, okay, well, this is close. I'm going to yeah. tweak it a little more. And you'll get it dialed in. Yeah, so I, bottom line, uh, if you're a photographer, spend this money on a trip, spend it on 
like a medium format camera like honestly just go out and like like buy like i would ra rather buy a crazy expensive camera than a crazy expensive so computer. do you think there's any photographers that could actually benefit <laughs> from it at all I, I don't see any use case where this would benefit a photographer videographers uh definitely but no, not photographers can can you Corey? Mm. you're kind of more in the commercial world than me but. i mean you need some big files like what's the biggest files that you make like it, doing like maybe a composite with a bunch yeah. of photos Three or four gigs. Three or four gigs. I yeah. Mean, I, you can handle that still. I can handle that on my iMac. I think it'd be kind of overkill for solely photography bit purposes, but I don't know. He had the money, though. <laughs> yeah. You wanted the fastest, <laughs> coolest looking computer, and that, that one's pretty cool. Yeah, it's uh, there, there's a lot of thought put into that design, but um, think about, about how much money you're going to be spending on that, and if that's going to make you have to take on, like, like jobs you don't want to take on. And yeah, and like also that. realize mm -hmm. that a machine like that was made more for commercial purposes and it's not as much made for like a local business or a single yeah, individual's yeah. use. Yeah, it's made for movie studios. Those guys shell out thousands and thousands on like computer monitors. Yeah, they have like racks yeah, and racks yeah. of servers to do it all. So like to them, that's still an integral. <laughs> This was a clip from the full photo footage podcast. Please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and we will see you every Sunday for a new podcast. Every Sunday, new podcast. Subscribe now. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks.